Good evening, I'm John Scott, and this is a special two-hour edition of The Fox Report. Security is beefed up for tonight's rally after Trump was shot in the ear last Saturday in Butler, Pennsylvania. And J.D. Vance spoke at the rally earlier today after he officially became Trump's vice presidential pick earlier this week. Team coverage for you this evening. Ohio Republican Senate candidate Bernie Moreno will join us to break down the GOP's chances in Congress this November. But first, Alexis McAdams, who witnessed last week's assassination attempt firsthand, is live in Michigan with more on Trump's rally there. Alexis. Hey, John. So we can tell you right now, this is more about unity, according to the Trump campaign, here on the ground in Grand Rapids. It's this is a very important swing stay, right, as we talk about. Trump and J.D. Vance, his now VP pick, are trying to turn this part of Grand Rapids and the entire state as bright red as they can here. This is what J.D. Vance had to say a few minutes ago. Watch. President Trump, in other words, wants to build a country that actually works for the citizens of this country once again. He did it for four years. He did it so successfully for four years. So we're talking about 20,000 people out here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, inside of this arena. They want to hear the former president talk about inflation, the border, and also what his plans are for the future, his path back to the White House. I thought it was interesting, John, that many of the people I talked to outside say they feel like President Trump has become a little bit more soft and a little bit more about unity since he almost lost his life up on that stage in Butler, Pennsylvania. So they're hoping he kind of sticks with that message of unity and stops attacking President Biden and Kamala Harris because they say at this point he doesn't really have to. Take a listen to what people had to tell me. Watch. You know, I think since the shooting, I seen something in Trump that I hadn't seen before. And, um, You know, I, I just, I think he's the right man for the right time. So we know any minute the former president will be taking that stage here behind me in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, looking to see exactly what he talks about and what the focus is. But from what we've heard at the RNC, he's looking down the path on what his exact plans are when he gets into the White House. And he wants to introduce Americans and these voters here in Michigan to J.D. Vance because he thinks he can help turn some of those people who might be in the fence toward Donald Trump, John. I wonder about getting into that rally, Alexis. I mean, his outdoor rallies obviously have been huge. Now you've got them indoors where there are fewer seats. So how did these people get those tickets? How did they get those, you know, precious grandstand seats? Yes, I went through that process of people buying those tickets. Uh, and the main thing to point out was John was that they don't want to bring in any bags. So they had to go through pretty much air security. So compared to when we were out there, that was just a massive field. It would hold like huge farming events out there. There was an airstrip. Um, there was a lot more room. As you know, that the shooter was able to get on. Uh, it was just a building that was a football field. This is a controlled environment. Everybody was checked when they came in, and there's lots of security from the federal state and levels here on the ground. All right, Alexis McAdams on the ground in Grand Rapids. Alexis, thank you. Who could possibly reject the idea that four years of President Trump has been a hell of a lot better than four years of Joe Biden, right? We've got an opportunity to win a lot of races up and down the ballot to re-establish American dominance in energy, to drill baby drill and kick out the drug cartels of our country. One of the things that President Trump wants to do is build the kind of country where kids can make mistakes and learn from them instead of those mistakes taking their life. Isn't that just common sense? That's Vice Presidential Candidate J.D. Vance speaking at today's Trump rally accompanying the president at a rally for the first time since being picked as Trump's running mate. Bernie Moreno, who is running for senator in Ohio, knows Vance very well from their time in the Buckeye State. I'm so proud that my senator, my friend, J.D. Vance, will be the next 
Vice President of the United States. He represents the best of Ohio, the best of America, and will be an incredible leader and defender of President Trump's plan to always put America first. Let's bring in Bernie Moreno, who is hoping to unseat incumbent Democrat Senator Sherrod Brown. So, uh, J.D. Vance, I was frankly surprised when he was the choice. He hasn't been a senator all that long, certainly well known as an author. But what do you think overall he brings to this ticket? Well, first of all, he brings youth. He, he's the first millennial at the top of the ticket. He's 39 years old. Uh, he'd be the first Marine at, at, in, in the Oval Office or, or on the top of the ticket, vice president. Uh, he brings the Midwest. He brings Midwest values. Uh, this election is going to come down to Michigan, Pennsylvania, maybe Wisconsin. And he can he can relate to the heartland because he's lived bad policies. He knows what it's like when these forever politicians abandon cities like Dayton and Toledo and Middletown and what it means to the future of this country. So I couldn't be more proud to have J.D. Vance on a ticket. It's almost surreal to see your friend up there. But he's going to be an amazing uh, vice president to have uh, Donald Trump's back at every turn. I'm sure that he's been incredibly busy since his name was chosen. But have you had a chance to speak personally with him since then? Yeah, so we, we had a, an event together on Wednesday. I've spoken to him a couple times since then. Uh, you know, it's all a little bit surreal, but he's ready for the challenge. I mean, he's got an amazing biography, whether it's uh, overcoming a childhood of having a mom that was addicted to drugs, joining the Marines, starting a business, writing a book, uh, being a senator, and he's only 39. Uh, so it's a pretty amazing, remarkable career. And I think as America gets to know J.D. Vance, they're going to fall in love with him. Yeah, he really um, does, you know, possess all the attributes of sort of the American, the all-American success story. Yeah, I mean, think about this. Uh, a kid, me, born in Columbia, South America, who's running for the United States Senate, got the ability to second the nomination for a kid that was born in poverty. And uh, all the uh, cards would have said, hey, this guy was never going to make it. And he's going to be the vice president of the United States. Only in America could something like that happen. And in, in terms of his own surprise, I guess, at being picked, did you talk about that? Did, did you talk about what it was like for him to get that phone call from the former president? Well, it all happened very quickly. I mean, obviously, he knew was, he was in consideration, but uh, the news happened pretty quickly. I think the weight of the moment hit him on Monday evening. But again, John, he is somebody who is absolutely prepared for the challenge. What I want you and America to know about J.D. Vance is that he's just a genuinely good person. Uh, you have so many of these phony politicians that make up a persona. They get fed lines that they read. J.D. is the real deal. He's so authentic, such a great human being. And I think more importantly than anything else, a great family man, great husband, great dad. He was a critic of uh, Donald Trump early on in his Senate career, but... But he came around and the former president warmed up to him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people that didn't know what President Trump would do in office, but we were wrong. I mean, look at what he did. Uh, we had a secure border. We had energy independence. We had peace and stability around the world for the first time in a long time. Everything was objectively better. We had low inflation. Look at what Biden's brought us, the exact opposite. They destroyed our border. They destroyed our economy. They destroyed our standing in the world. And we're not going to let them destroy this country. All right. So as as you uh, take on uh, Sherrod Brown there in Ohio, do you think that uh, J.D. Vance is going to be an asset to you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, President Trump is the biggest asset. Uh, he's at the top of the ticket. He's going to win Ohio by probably 15 points. Having J.D. on a ticket is just absolutely turbocharging it even more. That's why you've seen Sherrod Brown who's the most extreme liberal in the United States Senate, uh, trying to say he was with Biden. Of course, he voted with him 100 percent of the time. And yesterday completely rejected him, threw him to the curb. He doesn't know what to do. This is a guy who's never had a job other than being an elected official. We're all just sick and tired of these career forever politicians. Speaking of, uh, you know, politicians, the, the president is being pushed to get out of the race by many in his own party. What's your prediction? I think he stays in. I think he's, uh, it's too late. 
And the reality is it doesn't really matter who the president or vice president is on the Democrat side. You can't defend their policies. We see it at the grocery store. We see it at the gas station. We can't barely go out to eat because that's considered a luxury now. Our Medicare premiums are going up. We have wars in every corner of the world. American energy is getting uh, attacked. Uh, they don't want us to uh, be able to have a gas stove or own cryptocurrency. They want us to drive EVs. We're sick and tired of these politicians that think that they're smarter than we are. And yet, and we'll get into some Fox polls a little bit later in the hour, but the race still is pretty close when you look at the nationwide polling. Yeah, I mean, people, uh, of course, uh, know what they hear from the media. They think President Trump is uh, uh, somehow an assaulted democracy when, in fact, it's the exact opposite. But I think those polls don't represent what I hear when I go to every corner of Ohio. I think this is going to be a landslide victory, but Republicans can't take it for granted. we got to work really hard. Vote, vote early, vote absentee, make certain that you're registered. we got to send a clear message uh, to the people in this country that we're going to go back to our founding principles. Bernie Moreno, Republican Senate candidate in the state of Ohio. Thank you. Thank you, John. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.